as the Orlick was close to the end of its journey to Jacksonville, we got a guided tour of the ship from Craig Burnett of the Jacksonville Naval Museum. We had him take it off, weld it straight up and down. Up first on our tour is the anti-submarine warfare rocket launcher. Basically what it would do is take a torpedo with a rocket on the end, throw it out over the horizon to give it better distance than a regular torpedo. Next up, we'll go up to the bridge and you can see where they drive this thing. This is what the view is like for us from the starboard side bridge wing. The captain wants to come out to see what's going on. He would sit in his chair. They could uh, observe targets off in a distance from here, navigate the ship from here when they're pulling in a port. And in here is the bridge where everything actually happens. The helm of the Orlick wasn't in place when we rode the ship, but the Jack's Naval Museum does have it. This is a status board. It gives you status of everything going on on a ship. Which is still in a foreign language from the Orlick's time in the Turkish Navy. And here would be the engine order telegraph where they ring up how many turns and um, you have the little levers here like you see. Those were also removed while we were in the yards. The Orlick also has a radar scope, but some parts were removed and used as props in the Tom Hanks World War II movie Greyhound. Here's a view of the forward from the bridge. It needs a cleaning. I mean, there's, let's face it, it's, you know, but a lot of it, it's cosmetic work. Volunteers are welcome to help. Restoring this ship for the city brings this group great pride. And it's great saving this historic ship because second most decorated warship. We've talked to Vietnam vets with the 11,000 rounds she fired out of her guns on shore bombardment. Many said this ship saved their lives. And soon you'll be able to visit. Reporting in Jacksonville, Rich Donald, First Coast News, on your side.